टू कॉल धोबी का कुत्ता ना घाट का ना घर का यू नो के इंडिया आई एम सॉर्ट ऑफ नॉवल्टी इवन माई ओन फैमिली डिन सी माई डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज बिकॉज दे वॉज सो पिक्यूलियर एंड नॉट मेनी सो सलाम बॉम्बे राइट अंडर दर नोज आई मीन इट वॉज द लाइफ अराउंड अस राइट my big question here uh mirana i've been meaning to ask you since the name sake actually uh oh. and the first one of the things that struck me when i watched the film perhaps because of the issues that was dealing with uh, is also of the insider and the outsider uh especially for the migrant you know when they move from a place and to another land that they inhabit thereafter mm-hmm. mira for you personally someone who is, lives in the us has worked with the studio system has worked as an independent filmmaker i'm presuming a lot of people around you uh, who are so called without you know quote and quote natives would see you as an indian filmmaker whereas in india because Bob, especially bombay because bombay has what you call a bollywood or a film industry of its own people in bombay will see you as a new york based filmmaker is that something that you had to deal with this whole like kamu sort of way the outsider being the outsider regardless of where you are yes and and uh, and no as well because um very early on not that i pursued the path but very early on right from my first documentaries i understood that the only way for me to be is to use the confusion in my work you know but i didn't do i did that a little bit by hindsight mm. but because initially it was confusing and i used to be you know like suffer with it myself that i was i used to call dhobi ka kutta na ghat ka na ghar ka you know ke india i am a sort of novelty even my own family didn't see my documentaries because they were so peculiar and and cinema vehite was not known and living with strippers in ghat koper night club and then going <laughs> to mohammad ali road with another family and all it was like mira has is not around these days you know Lost like matlab i was not uh, uh, i was persona non grata with mm. the family for sure you know because i was doing weird things you know mm. um and then more than that it was a question of who's you know who am i speaking to who, uh, finding an audience and in india i would go with the reel of india cabaret under my arm 16 mmm and go to like unions go to women's groups go to fest film festivals of course go to uh, secretary association you know like sec- uh, right. working working groups labor mm-hmm. groups and i would just say chalo with the uh, uh, projector and show my film that was what i did and and i did did get a lot from it but it it's um, but there was no other way to make sure it was seen and discussed uh, you know you know so there was that uh, i guess the loneliness of the pioneering type of way of showing documentaries you know um anyway so but then you know as you keep making the craft you i began to inure myself to who thinks i am this and who thinks i am that mm. you know i mean they can call me a new york filmmaker in like bombay but the fact is that not many saw salam bombay right under their noses i mean it was the life around us right and what happens sometimes when we live in it all the time is that you have to or you do numb yourself to it you know you don't see what is in front of you and i guess one real um, energy that comes from coming and going not constantly but knowing mm-hmm. you have one foot there and one foot is that you see the ordinary with different eyes you know you feel it more i guess i did to speaking for myself right. uh, you know i i i see something more almost more passionately mm-hmm. you know so um and then of course there are subjects that deal with this seesaw of exile and longing you know and not that i'm only going to do that but i know i have a way into that that is personally felt you know um and personally lived in you know like the, in the namesake uh, or in so many things in in a reluctant fundamentalist you know um and you know i think making cinema is really lends itself to that state of the seesaw sometimes more effectively than literature because it actually in its cutting in its dialectic sort of juxtaposition of this with that it, it you can create an en- energy that is a third thing you know that 
that people who have lived between worlds, to use that example, uh, immediately understand or feel the fragrance of, you know. So that's um, also something I learned in the, in the early days. But Mira, what, what I'm trying to get at is that when you moved uh, back in the late 70s and all through the 80s for that matter, I mean, now, of course, we see a lot of South Asian representation. And, you know, there's the Mindy Kalings of the world, and Aziz Ansari's and Hassan Minaj's of the world. I mean, to be brown skinned would have been seriously exotic to be in the entertainment or show business, uh, as it were, right? You're not white, you're not black. If, you, if one were to like find you in the midst of something, like I came across this information, which I did not know is that when you made your first film, uh, you rented the place to edit it with Spike Lee. Uh, no. And then both of you were like, renting the same- 24 edit. hours, 12 hours right. each, discount yeah. price. Huh. Yeah. So would you would you then be seen as more a person of color and perhaps you know find yourself being closer to that lot that's also struggling to, to enter show business uh, in the same way that they still are. But it, yes, I mean, yes. for a brown person, would have been even more and tougher, right? Yes, yes. Uh, there was no power of a group. At none at all, none at all. Uh, so, um, and there was no even way of looking at you know your brown. I'm like, I mean, it wasn't so overt or seen that way. The label I used to deride uh, was the exotic, mm. you know, flower or the you know the the tropical. Not they wouldn't say tropical, but exotic. Uh, um, it was more that, but I would just you know laugh it off. But I was aware of it very much so. And, you know, but what was interesting was at that time in New York, there was a lot of alternative ways to make art. Mm. So there was like basement collectives where you could rent. Uh, it was young filmmakers, video arts. Now I'm on their board. Now I support them because they really helped me out. You know, so you, you, you rent a cubicle, mm. <laughs> you know, I, and you do your films in that cubicle. Um, and then that you then you graduate to a room that Spike and I shared because we wanted to. It's also all it was also subsidized, you know. But it was still we subsidized ourselves further by mm. doing twelve hours, twelve hours. And so there were systems though that existed that you could work like that, you know, which in which it didn't matter if you were brown or black. I mean, you, you rarely saw. You rarely saw. That is true. A person of color. You rarely saw that. Mm. I didn't at all. Besides Spike later. But um, but the I have to say that the atmosphere was very progressive, so that you didn't feel this or that. You know. It's more in the subjects I was doing. What I was right, doing right. was not something that I could fluidly share uh, without falling into the trap of, uh, you know, seeing. Uh, you know that was that was what the challenge I think that time was, which was its own interesting challenge that you had to make films that need not be explained. Mm. I, I refuse to pander and I still refuse to pander, but that need not be explained and yet not make it so that it is clear only to them or it is not of us. That is the, that is the democracy sword that I've always worked on, I think. And now I feel like I know it, but sometimes I still don't, you know. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.